Well, okay, so we've talked about your background. Now let's talk about, let's talk about, now let's let's switch gears for a minute and just like kind of finish up just talking about career and life and just your, in general, what, how do you, you know, when you, when you make your decisions about what you're going to do with your career, whether it's another album, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a deal of any kind, a movie, a endorsement, whatever you decide to do, how do you make those decisions? Whatever I decide to do next, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know because without giving up any like your secret sauce shit, I'm just saying like, you know, what do you, how do you go about approaching, you know? Well, the weird part is to me, um, like all, all I really do is write. So I'm constantly like, whatever things that people approach Paul with, mm -hmm. sometimes he'll bring the stuff to me and be like, this, this, this is not going to take your time away from writing. So you want to do this deal or whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I filter through a lot, as you can imagine, but um, opportunities seem like something he might consider doing or I think should doing, or at least he should know about it, bring his way. Right, right. So you keep it, you filter it that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah he, he would spend all day looking at things that are on the table if I didn't filter through it. Mm -hmm. It would take up all of his time just looking at it. So you, you, so you said you spend your time writing. Um... The, 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 I, obvi it's obvious you love it. It's obvious you're passionate. But why? Why do? You, why do you? At this point in your career, why do you still care enough about writing? To spend your time a lot, a great majority of your time writing. Um, just being competitive, and I'm sure you can you can speak to this too because, you know, hip hop has not been around for long enough to really know how long somebody can go for and i feel like as long as you still rap and i still rap like a lot of these kids coming up can look at that too and be like i can mm -hmm. do that i can do that too mm -hmm. i can rap till this ain't a five-year thing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying your longevity I've, I've told you that before like I've, I've studied that like and and how you still always even when there's you don't have an album out you're still relevant no matter what it is, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just, I study that and I watch those moves that you make and shit because I, I, what do you do? I had this conversation with Buster Rhymes before. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you get to a certain age and you can't stop thinking of shit? Mm -hmm. Your heart is still in it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, what do you do? Do you just sell it to less people because there's less people that want to buy it? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Do you? record it for yourself and not put it out what do you do mm -hmm. when you're still passionate about something you know i tell you what you well you know and and i say this it's, it's funny but i say you know you bring it to rock the bells and what why do i say that that's why i started this station that was the main thing about it because see my thing is this the you know as as artists mature so do their fan bases right like your fans had birthdays right along with you right they want to hear you the, you you deserve for your fans to be able to hear your music without a filter right. like paul shouldn't have to call up a station that is you know feels like they can't play the new eminem because it's going to play next to future you know what I mean? Or it's going to play next to Little Pump, with all due respect. So they feel like they have to make a choice, you know, because stations are so contextual. You know, there's so much about context. So my thing is, Rock the Bells, we're going to be able to play. We got a section called Breaking Bells where we play new shit by classic artists. Not that, you look, you, you cross a lot of boundaries. You break a lot of boundaries. Your music plays on many stations around the world. We get that. But for a lot of classic artists... You know, once you're no longer in that sweet spot of the demo, once you're no longer at that certain age range, it's like, ah, go, go fuck yourself. Right. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we, 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 not, we don't believe in that anymore. It has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with quality. It's just been a fact of how the, the things have worked. Right. But now the, the facts have changed. And the truth is, now there's a place where you can have a classic artist and this shit can play. You know what I mean? Right. If tomorrow, you know, rest, up, rest in peace, Prodigy, um, if Havoc made a new joint tomorrow, you know what I mean? Yeah. He has a place. If Buster makes a new joint tomorrow, like I, I spoke to Buster very candidly and I said, you know, look, that's my man. I love him. I said, but you know, what you did with Missy, that's a little newer and that may work for, you know, some other stations down the dial, which is no problem. Right. I said, but you know, at Rock the Bells, we want that vintage, that classic shit for classic fans, straight up. Like right. you don't have to compromise your, your craft. Right. You know, like your sensibility still matters. 
your right. same sensibility still matters here. And I, I think that, that would, that's important that, that the world knows that because there's so many fans listening to Rock the Bells out there and so many fans out there, they haven't been getting this shit, man. They feel like, like, like let's take Paul for example. I talked to Paul about, before, like two years ago, I talked to Paul about music. It's like he's looking at LL Cool J and, and in his, his mind, it's like, I love this guy, but it makes no business sense where I'm going to play this shit. You know, Hot's not going to play it. This one's not going to play it. Power, this one's not going to play it. But now, all bets are off. Right. That shit is out the window now because, you know, they tried to do those boom, those other states. It didn't work. This is the real shit now. You know, I was on the phone with Cool Herc for an hour and a half the other day. I'm on the phone with Flash. I'm on the phone with, you know, Kaz. I'm on the phone with Mo D. I'm on the phone with, like... All of the founder fathers of the art form, this station is blessed by by the absolute OGs of the game. We, we're the most official station in terms of this part of the, the, the genre. And so I say that to say this. Now you can come here. You know, now your music, the way you want to hear it. If you want to make a fucking hot ass boom bap record, you can make that shit. And you don't have to worry about it, you know, not playing because it doesn't sound like... A auto tune joint. Not that there's anything wrong with the kids with the auto tune and all that. Y'all do your thing. But we got the OG classic shit happening over here. So I just wanted to say that to you. You know what I mean? I think that's important. Um, so, okay, so.